As I am barreling towards the ripe old age of 30, it is appropriate that I have recently passed 30,000 subscribers. Thank you to all uh, you who are in my community who have helped me get to that number. But it also is making me very reflective of the fact that it has been 10 years since I've really started my journey in programming and data. It's been 10 years since I decided that I would no longer work in the fine dining industry, which I had committed most of my early career to. And it's really been 10 years of adulthood where I only recently started feeling like I'm coming into my own, like I'm confident in the skills that I have and that I'm confident in my ability to create a company and create value for other people. Honestly, if you told me uh, in 2012 that I would be where I am right now, I don't know if I'd believe you. I don't know if I'd believe you if you told me that I'd work at Facebook. I don't know if I'd believe you if you told me that I had a successful consulting company that would take over um, all of my time. I just don't know because again, back then, 20 year old me was still reeling with the fact that I was giving up something that I really loved, my original passion for a totally new space. And I think it's very important for all of us to take time in our lives to reflect on our successes. Otherwise, they kind of just fade away in our memory. So I want to take this time to one, go through the last decade of time and go over the lessons and challenges that I've overcome to get to where I am so that maybe you out there, since most of my audience is in a similar age range, can either one, also take time to reflect, but also two, glean from the lessons that I've picked up over the years as I've gone from, again, working arguably in fine dining to working in technology and becoming very successful at it. So let's reflect on this journey with me as we go over the lessons that I've learned uh, from my 20s going into my 30s. First, let's go back to 2012. Again, I was honestly still working in a kitchen at this point. I had four or five different sourdough starters uh, that I would keep track of every day before it was cool to make sourdough. I was using things that I was learning while I was kind of auditing an organic chemistry course in some of the daily projects that I was doing at work while also trying to figure out what exactly did I want to do with my career. All I knew and the lesson that I kind of picked up in this year is that it's arguably important to figure out what lifestyle you want before really settling on a career. Because for me, I knew I wanted a family. I knew I wanted to spend time with that family. And for one, the culinary world, even if you were to make a decent amount of money, would require 80 to 100 hours a week, arguably, and likely you wouldn't get paid very well. So I knew I needed to make a switch. And that's when I went back to college uh, to finish the last two years that I still had in my business degree, but I still had to pick a specialty. So I landed on information systems by chance, mostly because of how it fit course-wise. And that's when I started getting exposed to programming. I got exposed to my first CS course. I think it was CS 142 um, at UW, which was just your intro Java course. And this is where my journey all started. 2012 passed very quickly and it was before i knew it i was in 2013 and at that point i was feeling very behind everyone else around me already had internships or were looking for internships i had friends who were helping me study uh, late at night leak code problems and different questions that were similar to you know reversing a linked list or traversing a binary tree prior to me even hearing what a data structures and algorithms course was and suddenly i was being exposed to all of this new information and i was just gleaning as much as i could slowly i was definitely finding a new passion and at this point i think was the time when i was exposed to the hbr article about data science and that's I think when I started really digging into that concept, I love the idea of programming. I love the idea of statistics. And I was like, I, I, I want to figure out how to use this together. And again, once you read that article about data science, you're like, oh, here, here's the answer. Here's where I could maybe start looking for um, jobs or opportunities. In 2014, I figured out exactly how hard it is to get your first job. In 2014, I think the only thing I could actually find in terms of a job was helping kids learn how to program which obviously taught me a lot of patience, but in terms of really doing the work, it just wasn't enough. And that's the time that I figured out the lesson of in order to kind of grow in life, you kind of sometimes have to give up things that you think are security in order to take a chance. So at this point I had two jobs, I was still kind of working in the culinary world. I was kind of teaching kids to program, but I realized that it was all distracting me in terms of the actual focus I should be doing, which is getting a real job or internship. So this is when I decided to quit uh, all of my jobs and just focus fully on trying to get an internship. And the universe is kind of funny because when I did finally quit my job uh, teaching kids how to program in 2015, I was given basically an offer as an internship 
the next day, basically, where they wanted me to start the next week. And, you know, I was hoping to get a little bit of a vacation. So I basically started my internship uh, the next week where I was working at a hospital underneath someone who was doing a lot of kind of data warehousing and SSIS work. So it was really exciting for me. You know, they, they kind of brought me on because they saw that I had some automation experience and they really wanted to kind of glean that and, and help me and challenge me to kind of learn how to automate things in a larger context. I was working on a finance team. So I was learning how to like automate a lot of financial processes. But then the senior engineer who was supposed to be my mentor decided to leave and they never replaced that position. And no, their plan, their brilliant plan was to use me to do similar work that they had been doing. And honestly, as a junior, I had no idea what I was doing. It was probably one of the more stressful parts of my life as I was just dealing with the fact that I had to kind of learn everything. I had to kind of put everything into practice. I was definitely not using the greatest practices, just trying to get work done, just trying to figure out you know, how to handle the kind of bureaucracy aspect of certain things, trying to figure out how to actually do the work um, in technologies that I hadn't actually worked with. You know, I was learning C-sharp and I never worked with C-sharp before, figuring out how to put together MBC uh, websites and all these things that I never really learned. And I was just having to learn really quickly while also suffering like an hour and a half commute both directions. And it was honestly really painful. There were days I just went home and was so stressed, mostly from driving three hours a day, that I knew I needed to change things for multiple reasons. There were multiple reasons that I needed to make a change. And that was the lesson that I think I was picking up at that point was you sometimes need to kind of take hold of things and make changes happen. Otherwise you're going to be continuously stuck in this cycle of driving an hour and a half to work, doing work that's not the best because you're just the only person doing it and making things happen that aren't gonna be sustainable long-term. So I knew I had to make changes. And so basically in 2016, I committed at that point to start making a change. And sometimes that's what you need to do. You need to take a moment in your life, look at what's going on and just commit to making that change. Commit, because if you don't commit, nothing's going to happen. So I started interviewing like crazy. If you've watched my video about the first time I failed my Amazon interview, that's the time that this happened. So there was that interview. And then I also happened to interview at a company that was focused on healthcare analytics and I happened to get the job offer. And I was super excited. My title was gonna be data engineer. I was super excited. I thought this was gonna be it. I was gonna work for a startup and this was gonna be a lot of fun. But honestly, day one of working for the startup was a little bit hard. I realized that this role was more an operational role. Really, my job was to load files and there wasn't much building involved. It was better in a lot of ways. I was working for more of an engineering focused team. There was a lot of good practices that they had put into play. A lot of things that I could just start gleaning right away. So early on, that's what I focused on. I focused on trying to glean as much as I could, but eventually that got old. And so I learned at least my next lesson, or at least something that I've learned over and over again, to make the most of the situation and just start trying things. So the first thing I saw, I've talked about this before, is I noticed that we were doing something that was super repetitive. We were continuously loading files the same way over and over again, where we had all this information in databases and we could kind of pull that and just automate it. So I built a simple kind of automated uh, dashboarding system that you could go to a web UI and I decided to show it to the director at the time and I showed it off and honestly, she took it and she saw that I knew at least something in terms of development and decided to kind of change my position to do more dev work. And it was awesome. Like this was an awesome uh, opportunity and challenge that I took with both hands. You know, when every life gives you an opportunity, you should always try to grab it as much as possible. And I got to do a lot of fun development work. I got to do some of the first projects that I would call end to end system work, where I was thinking, you know, how data came in from a raw state and landed in some sort of final state uh, in a data product. And this was probably my first exposure of really doing this well. Part of that is because I had more senior engineers who looked at my work and would be like, this is terrible, or this plan is terrible, or this design is terrible. And that's sometimes what I needed. Sometimes you need someone that will hit you in the head and just be like, your work isn't great. Let's rework it. There were times I wrote queries where they would be like, no, we're going to restart this entire thing, even if I spent a lot of time doing it. And honestly, I was super thankful for it. So 2016 and 2017 was kind of more of this, where I got to work on building data products. It was a ton of fun, obviously for me. I was also kind of starting my consulting company and it was picking up a little bit here and there. And that was also a lot of fun, you know, learning how to kind of manage contracts. Uh, there was a point where I ran my first six-figure contract and it was super terrifying, as you can imagine, because you realize suddenly 
you know, maybe worst comes to worst, they're unhappy with your work and you have to give the money back. But now I was actually paying other people to also help me with that work. And you realize suddenly you might have to pay them still and pay this company back. So there was a ton of terrifying things happening there while I was learning how to build end-to-end -end data products. And there was just a ton of new things that I was learning. But most of this honestly was work. Right. Like most of these lessons have been work because I, I'd say that's what defined a lot of my early 20s. And then in 2018, I think something happened and I realized I was getting older. I think it started with me looking in the mirror and seeing that the cowlick that I had when I was younger was gone because the hair at my temple had receded back. We're all getting older and you realize that life is passing by. And I think like most millennials, I hit 25 and I hit that quarter life crisis moment when you realize, is this the rest of my life? And you start having to actually think about all these thoughts that you never thought about because you've been out of school. You've, you've kind of been in this very ambiguous point of what does success look like for you? You're doing work, but what do you actually want to do? You've never really thought about it until now. And so like, I think most people, in this year, I was, I was definitely reeling with a lot of those thoughts. You know, 2017 was definitely a point of reflection and thought for me. And I realized I needed to make the most of my time because there's only so much you have. And you realize that, that someday you will die. And if you're not making the most of it, and if you're not doing work you're gonna be happy with, you need to change things. Now, I was really happy with the work that I was doing. I think the reason that I ended up deciding to leave this startup was because I realized there wasn't much growth trajectory, not just for myself, but also in terms of the company. I realized I was looking at what we were doing. There wasn't scale. We weren't really trying to scale. We were doing consistent work. It was profitable, but there was never going to be a 10X moment. And that's kind of what I wanted at this point. I was like, in my life right now, I wanted to learn how to work at a larger company just to see how it feels. And so in 2018, I started interviewing uh, at other companies. Honestly, I think originally it was like March, 2018, Facebook had reached out to me and I totally chickened out. Like I, I, I set a date with them to interview. And then I think maybe it was like a week or a few days before the interview and I like email, I'm like, oh, I'm too busy. Never mind. Uh, I'm, I'm super scared. This is not what I want to do. Maybe it was because I had failed so many interviews in the past, whatever the case. And I don't remember what happened later on, maybe a few months later, I was, I finally got the gusto to just do it all. I was like interviewing at like Facebook, Amazon, DocuSign, um, Accenture, just like a whole host of companies. And I was just hitting interview after interview. And I got a few of them and I got a few offers and Facebook being one of them, that's where I decided to go. They were definitely the highest paying and arguably I really wanted to feel like, what is the Fang experience? I think like most of us. So in 2018, I started my career at the end of 2018 at a fang. And honestly, it was everything that I thought it would be. Really mostly starting in 2019. Uh, it's really when I feel like I fully started uh, at Facebook. I got to learn a ton in terms of how they had developed all of their data infrastructure. Um, you could kind of feel the fact that you were working for a larger corporation and you were just a very small piece in a much bigger puzzle. So that's important to understand if you work for any of the large tech companies as a life lesson, you are just a small piece in a very big complex system. But there's something nice about that as well. You can kind of focus on what you're doing. You can really try to hone your craft. And I think the other thing that I picked up between 2019 and 2020 was understanding how to really create value at a larger company and really how to impact things at a larger scale. Because when you're at a small company like a startup, impact's very clear. There's no ambiguity, right? If you're not doing your work, the company will fail, right? And you're going to get fired because there's no one else to do your work. There's no one else that's going to replace you. And at a large company, it's very easy to almost get away with doing work that's maybe pointless. You can just get away with doing tickets or doing work that doesn't drive major impact, but keeps things going. It, it's arguably very easy. And that's people who don't get promoted. And in order to get promoted at any of these large companies, you have to kind of find or think about things that will actually drive impact will drive the bottom line or will drive, you know, automated experiences or will get rid of like a thousand tickets as I've kind of explained before. So that's kind of what I spent, I feel like a lot of 2019 and 2020 thinking about. It's like, what is impact? I hadn't really thought about it this way before. Like, what is the value that you can drive at a company? I think like most of us, when we start our tech career, we think about adding more technical skills horizontally um, as the way to increase our income or the way to increase our impact at the company. But there's a certain point of diminishing return where it's like you've learned enough base baseline tech skills. You've learned, you know, you don't need to learn another coding language. You don't need to learn another framework. And you need to start pushing up the value chain. You need to start getting involved in bigger decisions. And that's what I kind of picked up a lot of in 2019 and 2020.
was looking for those opportunities, was looking for opportunities where it's like, where can I drive value? And at the same time, obviously, I was doing a ton of new consulting work. I was kind of testing out um, how to kind of do all of this. But I was kind of stuck in consulting where I was never really making more than maybe 50 to $80,000 extra a year. I know that's still a ton of money. But when you're making several times that working at your day job, you're not going to quit for that money. And that's where 2021 comes in. 2021 was the year that I think I really learned that I wanted to commit to consulting. I had met someone the year prior um, who asked if I wanted to do some consulting uh, work with them. So I kind of started partnering with them. And I saw how she was kind of setting up a lot of her work, how she was setting up contracts and the fact that I was charging much lower as well as not doing things like doing more of a retainer um, approach to most projects or making sure that at least a project would last three months. All of these little things that ensure that you have work for the future, that we are not stuck at the end of the month with no work. In addition, I think my content that I've been putting out for a long time at this point finally started to really hit it where I've been getting a request a week about or maybe more uh, for different projects. So, and I think it was that combination of learning how to set up work and contracts in such a way that I would always have it as well as my content kind of finally taking off and really connecting um, with my more data engineering focused work. I think that's really what allowed me to kind of start looking at my work at Facebook and realizing that my time was coming to a close. That I really needed to, once again, commit to a whole new path. Just like back when I was younger, 21, 22, realizing I needed to quit teaching how to program, I realized I needed to quit Facebook or my consulting would never fully take off that I would always be stuck trying to serve two masters and doing neither as well as I could. And truthfully, it kind of felt like the beginning of this decade where I quit working in fine dining, where part of me felt like it was dying. Like I'd put so much effort into working for a fang. I'd put so much effort, you know, getting promotions at that said fang. And now I was just giving it up because I had a new opportunity. And personally, thus far, it's been great for multiple reasons. You know, 2022, this year, I've picked up so many new skills. I've learned even more in terms of the like contracting. I've learned how to put together much larger projects. I've also taken on some slightly different projects that involve a lot more go-to-market um, type work and not just purely data engineering work. So it's been a lot of fun in terms of like learning new skills, as well as learning how to broaden my skill sets in terms of the projects I'm doing, while also digging deeper in terms of becoming a better consultant. And that's honestly been 2022, and that's been the last 10 years. I've since then started this YouTube channel about a year ago. I've done a ton of other fun little things along the way that I've really enjoyed. And again, the funny thing is, if 10 years ago, you would one, tell me that I would work for Facebook, and two, tell me I would quit that job so I could do consulting instead on my own, I don't know, I might have laughed at you because I just don't think I thought it was possible. I think at that point I was still struggling to get an internship at a hospital that required me to drive three hours a day at a job where I was the only really technical person. And that was very frustrating. And now here I am doing my own consulting work, running projects that range from very technical to much more strategic. And it's all been a blast. Honestly, if you ask me what my plan is for the next 10 years, I couldn't fully answer that. And honestly, I'm shocked with everything I've been blessed to do and given the opportunity to do. And I'm only excited for the next 10 years because personally, again, I only feel like I'm just coming into my own. I only feel like I've just started to get comfortable with things like YouTube as well as consulting. And I'm super excited to see where the next decade will go. So if you're out there at any point, whether you're 22, 25, or even 30, a lot can happen in 10 years. A lot can change. You could build an entire startup that's worth millions, if not billions of dollars. You might come up with an algorithm that everyone wants to pay for. You could go from working in the kitchen to working at a thing, and it's just too hard for you to know. Personally, I'm excited for the next decade, and I don't know where you're at, but I really do hope that wherever you are, whatever challenges you're facing, that you look at every opportunity as a chance to grow and just embrace and commit to change as it happens in life. Always be ready to kind of keep life in open hands because sometimes in order to go to the next thing in life, we have to completely almost kill the previous life that we lived. Thanks so much for watching this video on my lessons that I've learned in my 20s, as well as just the 10 years in terms of my career in programming and data. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.